So this is something really interesting. I have a library of cassette software here. Software on cassette. Let's take a look. We have the checkbook manager. Requires 16K of RAM. We have the loan mortgage amortizer. Requires 16K of RAM. We have the mixed game bag one. Requires 16K of RAM. You see the same theme here? Backgammon, 16. The cube game, whatever that is, 16. Chess, 16. The gambler, 16. It's a... Uh, it's gambling software, blackjack, or slot machines. Is it something different on side B? Yeah, blackjack or slide machines. Requires 16K of RAM. View Calc, a productivity application, 16K of RAM. That I can kind of understand. I skipped that one on purpose. States and Capitals, 16K of RAM. Statistics, the only thing I can do on this machine, and that's the Timex Sinclair 1000, which comes with 2K of RAM. The only thing I can do out of the box is statistics. How fun is that? <laughs> not even not even a little bit. So what we need to do is get a 16K RAM expansion, it sounds like. There is a video on YouTube. I'll put a card over here so you can see what it looks like and a link up at the top so you can actually click on it. But this guy is amazing. He's programming a breakout clone, like, like the Atari breakout game. He's programming a breakout clone on the original 1K of RAM, and he's literally running out of RAM while he's typing the program in. Like, he hasn't even run it yet. He just can't even type it. So, highly recommended you get a 16K RAM module or open up the box and put one inside. That's probably even better. This has some horror stories to it. Not this particular unit. Well, maybe this particular unit. I don't know. But the horror stories usually go something like, I'm in the middle of typing my program in, and the machine just dies. And it's because of this edge connector right here. There's no, there's no like screws onto the machine. There's no nothing. So I've seen some people put some rubber bands around them. Let's take a look inside this thing and see how it works. You've already seen it in action on the channel. You already know how it works. The Monster Maze game in the previous video can't be played without 16K of RAM. And that's 16 kilobytes. I'm not saying that wrong. 16 kilobytes. The machine comes with one kilobyte of memory, 1,024 bytes. It's crazy. It's also kind of neat. Like you can do a lot of stuff with 1K of RAM and you really do require some computer science type stuff in order to get away with 1K of RAM. There's an FCC ID on the back. You know what that means. It means it's going to have some shielding inside. Let's see what that looks like when we get it open. Also, it's made in Portugal, which I find interesting because Timex was the US market for the ZX81. So to have this made in Portugal and then shipped over is interesting. Okay, so there's my first look. There is metallic paint on the inside and then cards to make sure that you don't accidentally ground out the device. What else do we have? Timex Sinclair 1016 issue two. So this is the the second revision of this. It it wasn't as good as this the first time it was made. They made it better. That pops out. There's more shielding on the other side and more cardboard to protect you from the shielding. And then this is a, a dual board. Do we have some 74 series logic here? Some jelly beans. 74 LS 157N. One, two, three, four of those. Uh, SP227, SP228. These are that's interesting. 74LS32 and 74LS00. And then over here is your memory. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 16 bit chips makes 16 bytes. There's a transformer there. It's an interesting looking transformer. Very interesting looking transformer. A couple of capacitors. Not a whole heck of a lot going on. This is interesting. These connect to the grounding on the case. The grounding. These connect to the metal shield on the case to provide grounding, let's say that. More hand-drawn traces. That's what I like about these things, hand-drawn traces. It's like a little flyaway piece of solder or something there. Interesting. So I just wanted to show you what this thing looked like on the inside. They put some electrical tape on the capacitors so they didn't ground out on the pins. I mean, they did put some thought into this. This looks like it's just regular electrical tape that was then screwed in. Again, so that the board doesn't short out against the case. Pretty genius little way of doing this stuff. These chips are 
in a nice, neat, arranged order. These are slightly offset, just enough to, to tweak me. I didn't tell you about this one. This is another 74 LS393, another jelly bean chip. But these chips here are just kind of staggered so that the traces can go through. Very interesting. Very interesting. Either way, I just wanted to do a real short video and share what this thing looked like on the inside with you. Uh, there is another video right over here I think you'll enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. We'll see you in the next one.